Hello beloved, welcome to my world. I'm not sure if I can call it that way, but I know um, it's a supernatural, it's out of this world type of world. And I think as we get born from above, we all live that out of this world type of life. I know you do. <clears throat> um, 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 I, I started a, a series this month and it's, um, it's a little bit different because um, they're all kind of encounters. Maybe this month is a month of encounters. And um, I'll describe, and I did describe some of the uh, scenarios, some of the people that I know personally, and the Lord has used the power of eternal life, the power of new creation, uh, of course, directly from the Holy Spirit and through my encounter with these people <clears throat> to change them and sometimes to, uh, I mean, lots of times to teach me something, to show me some things that I I couldn't get another way. See, every every person that's coming on your way, that's not by chance. And lots of times it's not that they want to come, they want to talk to you. It's, it's because they are drawn by the Father to you. No one comes to know the Son unless the Father draws. So people can know you as a man, as a woman, as a, um, a, pa a parent, as a sibling as a worker, as an employee, as an employer, they can know you with different identities, but if they know you as a son of God, that has to be from the Father, initiated by Him. <clears throat> so, we keep going in this journey, and I'll let you in <laughs> to, to see, to meet, um, more people. Right? It's, uh, during this encounters, discussion, and sharing, I'm uh, bringing up different categories of people, different types of people. And you met some of them, you are part of some of them. Uh, it's not the personal things about you that hear that. But it's something to see from the way encounter happens. Hopefully you can discover things, you can relate to things that are familiar, that will bless you, will help you in your journey with the Lord. <clears throat> so today we meet another um, ex-person. Um, when I, I met him, he was an atheist. I'm not sure if you meet or if you have met um, atheists. Um, they are interesting people. Most of the times, from what I learn, is um, they're nice people. Some of them are just agnostics and I think don't believe in anything, don't believe in God, the atheism, it's easier for them to explain <clears throat> where they are. But um, the, the experience with the atheists that um, I had was, um, was in communism and um, he was definitely an unbeliever but a very special type of unbeliever he was a passionate unbeliever <laughs> see i i believe that lots of atheism or people who don't believe in god is more a moral choice 
because they make some moral um, decisions, um, ways of life. And God is, it's a bother, it, it bugs them, it's, it's uh, interfering with their choices. <clears throat> and they would rather declare themselves atheists um, because they, they, they don't want God to exist. But that's more a moral atheism, I would say, than a, a belief, a philosophy, right? So, um, but... In, in this case, he he was a passionate believer in Marx and Marxism. He was um, thinking that um, whatever happened with the communism, you know, since Lenin uh, came in, was um, a disruption, was uh, misleading of what Marx's idea was, which was socialism. Yeah, and Marx and Engels, they, they were the parents of the socialistic philosophy. Um, so, like, getting things in common. and So, um, X was an uh, absolute believer in that, very upset with how the communists uh, uh, translated that and he thought that people went away from Marxism and they do some kind of a different type of thing. He was very upset with the regime <clears throat> but at the same time he was very intrigued because um, the first year of college um, I was in a dorm with um, another guy who was in the um, third year uh, at the same college and he happened to be the communist uh, secretary uh, for the party for that college and I was placed in the same room with that guy and of course uh, reading the Bible and um, just li living <laughs> the Jesus life uh, the guy was also intrigued, so he spread this rumor, and you know I got persecuted, almost kicked out of school, and um, um, you know put on the put shame in front of all my colleagues or something. That's that's for another story, another journey. But um, through this guy, um, the whole university basically found out there is a future engineer that believes in God and he confronts the philosophy professors, he confronts other intellectual people. So uh, uh, this, this guy, X, uh, was uh, very intrigued that someone that really has some brain <laughs> in his head and it's a smart person can believe in God. So um, he had some seeds in his soul planted by his grandma a long time ago. And he knew um, about the Bible, he knew about this believing, but it was still he had to check it for himself. Um, and um, this was um, this was a very interesting encounter um, because um, after I was um, you know exposed to all those people making fun of me and persecuting, um, X came to the dorm one day, especially especially to meet me. And I remember, like today, he knocked the door, opened the door, and he said these words, I heard that in this room lives a son of God. <laughs> what? <laughs> An atheist, a Marxist? <laughs> so, um... 
believed or not, we became friends. <laughs> and um, because we were both passionate believers, he respected um, my belief and he saw the proof that I really believe because I'm, I'm ready to be persecuted and kicked out of school and everything for what I believed. And I started to respect his belief because he was an, a very uh, loud voice against what the regime was doing at the time, saying that they, that's not right, what they are doing. And yeah, he had this dad somewhere high, high ranking in the Communist Party, so he was a little bit covered. But still, he, he didn't want to please man, so he was very passionate what he believed. And we started to talk and found out about how he was, but he was so curious of why uh, am I brainwashed and how, how can I believe that much? So um, that that time um, in in the country there were some preachers. Yeah, themselves persecuted for faith, but some of them, uh, very well known, um, uh, they were able to speak to the intellectuals like uh, Mr. X and uh, bring all kind of proofs, you know, anti-evolution and proofs of creation and all this. So it's very uh, prepared people. So one of those guys, a preacher, came to a church in the city. So what they did, I invited my newly found friend, the atheist, I invited him to church. Yeah, so we, we were talking, but I was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe in the back of my mind, I was thinking maybe he's going to get convinced by this smart preacher, right? Because I was not that prepared to talk to X so um, so it was a um, type of an evangelizing event so there were like I don't know hundreds maybe a thousand people as a big auditorium and um, X and myself we were there I think at the balcony and at the end of the evangelizing right that's you know I would say Billy Graham style um, the preacher asked that if anyone wants to receive Jesus to raise his hand. And guess what? My atheist friend raised his hand. I, I couldn't believe it, but I, it was so loud that moved that I turned and looked. We were not sitting right next to each other. And he had the hand up. I was... Um, I was perplexed. I, I didn't know exactly what to believe. So waited for the whole thing to finish. And um, on the way home, I asked him, of course, and he said that he didn't do it because he agreed or something, but he did it as an experience to see if what those people, there were lots of people raise their hands, those people have a real experience. He wanted to have a real experience too. He wanted to see if there is anything. I mean, it's weird. You don't believe in God, but you raise your hand to receive God. Uh, you don't believe, right? It's uh, and but knowing his heart, I knew he's not playing games. He really wanted to see what will happen. See, the Father loves us first. The Father is drawing Him, was drawing Him. And something important was happening in His heart. And um, the relationship continued. So when I left the country, uh, He wanted to see me. X wanted to see me. It was an emotional goodbye. 
because I didn't know if and when I would come back to the country. So um, I, I realized that we are connected, we are friends, and the respect continued. And at that moment, I knew I have to leave a seed, a seed with him, with this passionate person. Um, not knowing what's going to happen with communism exactly, but really looking at his soul. So I said these words. So I said, you know, if Marx disappoints you, if communism disappoints you, remember Jesus. My Jesus, the Jesus that I know that you've seen, <laughs> Jesus will never disappoint you. <laughs> and I, I left him with that. Um, it was, uh, again, an emotional goodbye. Um, but I never seen him again. I didn't connect and went back uh, back to uh, the country, back to Romania, but we, you know, I didn't know exactly where he is. Through some circumstances, I, um, I found that uh, recently he passed away. Not very old, and um, he he kept getting involved in all kind of movements. Um, against the regime so who knows what happened to this guy but what happened what happened with that hand that was raised what what happened to him see it says in the word that the lord is faithful even if we are not faithful and there is a place and somebody pointed that to me one time in Luke 145 when Elizabeth meets Mary Jesus' mom and Elizabeth says this listen blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord do you notice there is a past tense of belief? It doesn't say blesses the one that is in faith, that believes. It doesn't say that. It said it did believe and it's blessed. So, <laughs> you'd say, um, and, and yes, I... I, I do believe I'll, I'll see my friend X in, in heaven just because I don't believe God and the Father is bringing anyone around me and gives me words just um, so they can be condemned later on. <laughs> the Son of Man came to save, not to judge. Okay, so this is, this is precious, this is special. And am I too easy on the salvation of people and heaven and hell? And I don't think I'm too easy. I think I know the power and the greatness of the grace of God. He is beyond us. He's not looking for one reason not to save us. Remember how Jesus was walking and that woman came interceding for her daughter. You know what Jesus says? For this word. For this word. It's like a little uttering. Letters in a word coming out of her mind. It's like Jesus waiting for that so he can heal the daughter. For this word. 
Now, I don't believe God is looking for all the reasons possible so he can condemn you or condemn people. I think he's looking for any half words and syllables <laughs> so he can bless people. That's what I believe. Um, welcome <laughs> to the supernatural world where I live.